This is take three of the videotaped deposition of Bill Gates. And if he didn't like what you said, he would, uh, you know, he was known for responding with the words. Well, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. That's it's ridiculous. Take, I'm not, I'm not doing punches. this thing. No, 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 no. Somebody's confused. No. Somebody's just not thinking. I mean, there's no way. We'll figure it out. You guys never understood. You never understood the first thing about this. He's a multi-dimensional uh, individual. He has great depth in so many different areas. Hi, kids. You had a number of meetings with Jeffrey Epstein. Well, he's dead, so, uh, you know, in general, you always have to be careful. Uh, and, you know, the... Oh, what a lovely character. That is definitely someone I think should be in charge of my personal intimate life decisions and health care said the sheep welcome back beautiful and amazing human beings this is Lukadowski here of wearechange.org and there's a lot of eye-opening shocking news coming out today from the godfather of the globalist henry kissinger today that has definitely surprised a lot of people with his very interesting geopolitical take on the current situation unfolding right now in europe we're going to be talking about that plus a lot of other more troubling developments in china as of course also today is the second day of the World Economic Forum, where, of course, Bill Gates has been scheduled to speak at this private meeting of unaccountable multinational corporations, banks, and big governments coming together that are pledging that you will own nothing, have no privacy, and that allegedly... Your life will never be better when you give up all of your power and control to these megalomaniac sociopaths. Yeah, sounds like like a great trade. Great deal. As of course, as we covered in yesterday's video, these people openly brag about how they're creating the future, making important moves by humanity that, that, that should be made by, you know, humanity. Not just by a few unselected crazy old people that are known for their corrupted immoral business practices. Sorry. Yeah, I think that these discussions, these decisions should be up to the people and because of that, the corporate media slanders and attacks this major premise by saying that we're crazy conspiracy theorists even though we're, we're actually talking about the direct statements, documents, and plans that these people have for you. We're going to be keeping a close eye to see on what Bill Gates is saying his speech is actually going on right now during the making of this broadcast and so far I'm gonna rewatch the, the, the rest of it soon as of course his main topic is how do we stop future sicknesses and his solution to that is to stop it at the country that it originates in gee whiz what a, what a brilliant thinker he also very interestingly was talking about technological advancements that in 10 years will be able to diagnose entire populations within a month. And if you want to find out more about Mr. Roundup Monsanto himself, check out the video we did on LukeUncensored.com four days ago, which is definitely worth watch on the greater context of this man's impact on the world. But today we are also finding out that according to Alam Bukhari, an online journalist, that it was Bill Gates himself that poured millions of dollars of dark money into 11 of the 26 organizations that signed an open letter attacking Elon Musk, urging, of course, people advertising on Twitter to boycott the company if, of course, Elon Musk restores free speech. As you know, there have been a lot of public spats between Elon Musk and Bill Gates. The two billionaires have gone at it before, which uh, we covered specifically on our new website, BillGatesMeet.com. Yes, that it is an official website, BillGatesMeet.com, where you could find out more about the feud. And the feud is not just personal, it's also ideological ideological as of course bill gates believes that there's too many people in this world that the world needs to be depopulated in order to save the population and the world as of course many of these same people prophesizing these kinds of ideas are also the ones using private jets the most this as of course the private jet runways are filled in davos switzerland and we have people who can't get enough of their private jets like john Kerry, lecturing everyone about the importance of lowering your green gas Gas emissions now remember you need to lower your emissions his emissions his private jets his luxury mansions along with of course Al Gore's they're totally fine don't worry about those as of course your emissions are the problems not his your children are the problem not his and this is why we need to lower the population in order to save the world in order to save the environment which Elon Musk has been calling out as absolute bunk and looking at the data looking at the science I would agree with Elon Musk with his assessment as he previously said that we are going to be dealing with 
with the crisis of civilization if enough people do not start to make children. Not only because of economic growth being correlated with population growth, but there's not only going to be a financial reckoning with that, there's also going to be very extreme situations caused by an overabundance of old people and a lack of younger people that won't be able to help or sustain them. This as today, just moments ago, Elon Musk tweeted how the U.S. birth rates have been below sustainable levels for over 50 years right now. He has also talked about how many of the U.N. data and studies that have been done have not been updated and, of course, are not highlighting the importance of these population falls of these major population declines, which we should absolutely be talking about, as, of course, this is not just impacting the U.S., it's affecting the rest of the Western world, even more so places like Japan. And when people responded to Elon Musk with, with the data that he presented, Robbie Starbuck said that America needs a culture shift that celebrates the nuclear family and having kids, which Elon Musk responded to by saying, quote, we just need to celebrate having kids, and I would agree with him. Especially when it comes to countering a lot of the subliminal, subconscious, mind control, and propaganda that's been out there in entertainment and the corporate media that's been promoted by governments, that's been promoted by individuals like Bill Gates, that keep pushing cultures, ideologies, and lifestyles that, are, of course, are counter to the nuclear family. And I would even go as far as to say that there has been a concerted effort pushing people not to have children, which we have been seeing the results of for the last few years. And those effects, along with the chemical castration and the chemical poisoning of the population, is creating not only an unsustainable situation, but a drastic situation for the future of humanity. And that's why today, later on, on LukeUncensored.com, I will be doing another video about the top five ways that you are being poisoned without even knowing it. Yes, I have my own platform where I get to say and do whatever I want without the fear of censorship. It's just 50 cents a day, and we have new content provided to you there that is shaped towards helping you, informing you, giving you the best up-to-date information that we can that we don't have to bite our tongue on all exclusively on LukeUncensored.com. If you haven't signed up yet, sign up right now, which also helps grow this independent media organization while at the same time arms you with important information that you could act on that could help you in tremendous ways during this very key turbulent time that we are all going through this is where we strive to be the best versions of ourselves we just opened up a forum so members could find each other so we could talk about doing projects together so we could talk about solutions together that forum is in its beta but it's available right now to members of lukeuncensored.com i'm going to be participating in that forum that's only available for members, and I'm very excited about the things that I'm going to be presenting here as we already have three master classes, one in the works that is absolutely going to be critically important in dealing with a lot of this crazy nonsense. As today, we found out that the World Health Organization just re-elected Dr. Tidros Adhan, an Ethiopian former member of a radical communist organization that has been accused of genocide. This as today, the city of Philadelphia in the United States has just reinstated face masks for students and teachers all because the World Health Organization said some some words and, and it convinced them even though the data is not, not, not there highlighting any of this. But, but again, the World Health Organization has gotten a lot of things wrong. They have made a lot of decisions that people have paid the ultimate price for. And this is an organization that should be held accountable and not promoted. As of course, the World Health Organization is trying to work out a worldwide treaty that would give them even more power, which uh, they shouldn't have, especially after the havoc that they caused with the global lockdowns, which now is leading to severe economic consequences to the point where even the IMF says that we are facing a confluence of calamities in a bigger test since the 1940s. This as the president of the United States has been praising these high gas prices as a part of a, quote, incredible transition, as, of course, his policies have been directly creating situations that have made the price of energy and gas go up. To save the environment, we're, we're not producing energy here in the United States, where it's more cost-effective, where it's cheaper, quicker, safer, safer to get. No, we're importing it from Saudi Arabia. Deliberately, as the Biden administration has destroyed domestic energy production, all because of the 2030 UN 
and Vision, which of course wants to stop people from driving cars, having the freedom to move around, to travel, to eat real cheeseburgers, as of course this is a future that the elites don't want you living. Them, they're going to live their best life. You, not not so much on the other hand. And now shifting focuses here. A 98-year-old man that has created massive civilian casualties throughout his entire political career. A man who has been called a war criminal by many prominent individuals and scholars all over the world. I personally called him that to his face. Has said something that has shocked the current U.S. foreign policy establishment in Washington, D.C., as he came out during the World Economic Forum meetings and said that Ukraine must give Russia territory in order to ease the tensions and stop this conflict from escalating, specifically urging the United States and the West, along with NATO, to, quote, stop trying to inflict a crushing defeat of Russian forces in Ukraine, warning that it would, of course, have disastrous consequences for the long-term stability of Europe. And when it comes to this kind of uh, assessment here, this definitely doesn't sound like the, the Kissinger of old, the Cambodia Kissinger. This sounds like, like a thoughtful Kissinger that's trying to prevent this absolute horrible situation from becoming more horrible, which is leaving a lot of people asking, wait, what, what's going on here? Wait, why is Henry Kissinger? When, when Henry Kissinger is trying to de-escalate American foreign policy from being aggressive, you do have to start wondering what is really going on here, whether it's a change of heart by Henry Kissinger whether it's an overextension of the U.S. military industrial complex and it's over aggression, no matter what, I, I think this is something that we should at least heed the advice of and, and listen to and at least contemplate. As of course, Henry Kissinger has been warning for a very long time that this conflict would be an utter disaster for the world, and it is, especially when it comes to the larger world that's affected by it already economically. And this is not even detailing the bigger potential consequences of the situation getting even more out of hand from where it already is. And to see Henry Kissinger call for a ceasefire, call for peace talks, for call for this conflict to end to the point where Ukraine is even giving up their own territory for the prospects of peace here, that is a very big ask. And it's something that, of course, Ukraine has been saying that they will not be doing. Throughout this entire conflict, Ukraine and Russia have both moved away from the negotiations table and because of that there's a lot of options on on the table that of course don't look good for the future of both countries and the future of the world henry kissinger is literally warning about how this proxy war between the united states and russia could be fatal for the united states specifically saying how this conflict needs to end and should not be allowed to drag on for much longer as of course the west has been bankrolling this conflict and many people have criticized it as a policy from the united states that is continuing and extending this conflict through proxy which is making sure that it could go on for a very long time and there are some military experts that say that this conflict could go on for at least potentially 10 years and when we look at historical conflicts that, that, that could be the case here as we've been telling you that this conflict was going to be a lot longer than a lot of other people expected it to be and it's not just the, the stability of a balance of power in Europe that we should be worrying about here as of course we kept noting the, the larger global impact that this conflict will have on the rest of the world now of course there's some other people counting Entering Henry Kissinger saying that the United States should try to bleed out Russia, should try to get rid of them as a foe in Europe, that Ukraine should have significant victories against them, that they should not give up any territory, and then by soundly defeating Russia, they get rid of the boogeyman and get rid of their threat. There also could be a, an assessment to this that I've actually been thinking about within the last few days, that they need to, to not defeat Putin and Russia in order to still have a viable enemy as an excuse to build up their coffers. And I've been kind of thinking about that as well, seeing that as a potential possibility here. But again, this is all a conjecture and just my own personal opinion here on a very complex situation that has many working components to it. A lot of people benefiting in the military industrial complex for it, while of course, 
The poorest people in the world pay the ultimate price for the political advantages of some bureaucrats and the no-bid contracts by some unaccountable multinational corporations. Again, the situation there is, is tense. The United States is considering deploying special forces in order to protect their embassy in Ukraine. Just moments ago, Japan scrambled jets after Russia and Chinese warplanes flew near their airspace. This says, of course, Henry Kissinger has also been previously warning the Biden administration of U.S.-Chinese conflict, which he would call a catastrophe on the scale of the global conflict that happened in the 1920s. Excuse me, to be accurate here, through 1914 through 1918. But re regardless of the situation, I think it's very, very fair to say that we're dealing with a very unstable situation and what do you make of it? What do you think is really going on here? Press number one if you agree with, with Henry Kissinger. Press number two if you disagree with him and you and you kind of see this as a way to keep a boogeyman still out there alive as an enemy for the United States to, co to continue to fight. What do you think is going on here? Let me know down in the comment section below. I always appreciate your perspective, your comments, and your ability to be able to have an honest, frank discussion with me. I wish we still had the dislike button. We don't. I could still see it. And if you think I, I didn't do a good job, dislike this video and let me know why. I always strive to, of course, be the best possible resource to the people out there. I've been working really hard on a lot of LukeUncensored.com stuff, so my attention hasn't been as, as strong as it usually is here. But if you thought I did a good job, share this video with your friends, family members, random person walking down the street, someone spamming you, you spam them back, send them this video, randomly talk to people online, strangers in, on, on platforms, like, hey, check this out. And because you guys still do that, me and Atlas are here, and we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you, and this is why we love you guys. Stay tuned for a lot more here on wearechange.org.